Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Linda. I'm really glad that you could join me today. We've got a lot of fun in store. So what are we waiting for? What do I always say? Let's get started. So the supplies from Dollar Tree, I've got this home decor piece for a base. I'm going to use a piece of spindle that I have, but you could use the wood off a toilet bowl plunger cut to about eight inches. I'm going to use some of these wooden dominoes, some of these wood heart stickers. And then I'm also going to use a mailbox from Dollar Tree. I know they have a couple sizes. Choose your size. I'm using some roses in pink and red. And these are kind of the medium size roses. And then I found some of these sparkly hearts. I'm going to use some of those in red. And then a bunch of these on the pink uh, sparkly hearts. I chose four shades of pink scrapbook paper that kind of went together. And then one piece of black out of my supply for paper. And then I am using Dixie Bell in the color caviar, which is just a fancy word for black, to paint my mailbox. Now I start painting the inside, but at this point I'm not sure whether I'm going to use the inside and just glue the lid shut or, you know, um, obviously use it because I start painting around the outer edge as well and this paper's so waxy that around the lid, anytime you open and close the lid, it just scrapes off and I don't like it. And then of course I cut off the little flip sign on the mailbox. And now I'm painting around my home decor piece for the base, a couple of coats. You could use anything you want. You could use those cute little palettes, some other kind of home decor piece, just something cute for a base. And then of course painting my spindle. Again, if you use the wood plunger, cut it to about eight inches and paint. See, here's where I kind of ripped the paper off around it, but can you see on the lid, that's where I left it kind of shiny and that paint just peels off. I don't like it. I do try to rip it off later, but there's still some peeling, so I'm a little bit unsure, again, whether or not I want to leave that. We'll end up later gluing our wood uh, spindle to the base. For the mailbox, I cut a piece here just for this part of the lid with a little bit of overhang around the bottom edge, about a half inch on each side traced the front and back and then a bottom piece traced it you can see here easy and then traced a piece to go around the entire side again with a little extra to wrap around the bottom about a half inch because we'll use that bottom piece and layer over the top and hide those ends now let's take a minute to introduce myself my name is linda and i've been a crafter for years dabbling in all sorts of home decor crafts from farmhouse to rustic to primitive and even paper crafts i post videos once a week so you might want to go ahead and hit that red subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on a single video from me if you're on instagram pop on over and say hi I'd love to see you there take a breath and also I do have a Facebook group I'll have the link in the description box for Instagram and Facebook if you'd love to come join for more inspiration let's move on to the rest of our project now I've got all my pieces cut here using my patterns this is what I've got perfect and I even cut a piece to fit the bottom of that home decor part or actually it's the top to cover up the design I'm using my sewing machine to sew around all the pieces and I'm just going to kind of show one piece here being sewn but really easy I use size 10 or 11 needle tension set on four straight stitch I use all polyester thread because my machine doesn't really like cotton thread and I just sew directly on the paper as if you're sewing on fabric nice and easy Here's what it kind of looks like when I'm all done and what it'll look like on each piece. Super cute. Adds that great texture. Here are my uh, signs I'm going to be using, my domino pieces for signs. I had three here I painted in black, but decided I'm only going to use two. I've got a popsicle stick and then a couple of wood words I've painted. Um, going ahead around all the edges of my papers and little ephemera pieces you'll see here in a minute using the open end of my scissor blades and I just scrape along the edges. I love that rustic look you can see here. Now if I didn't scrape it, here's what the difference looks like. Here's a non-scraped paper and one that is scraped. So you can kind of see what it looks like. Here's all my ephemera pieces and hearts I cut out and everything. Going to be using Beacon Fabritat glue today use it on all my projects love it so we're going to go ahead and add glue and cover up this portion of the home decor sign but first you can see where the word blessed is it's kind of raised up and so I want a little more gluing surface so I'm cutting a couple pieces of cardboard two for each side and I'll glue them together and then I'll go ahead and glue it in that open space so that you know 
makes my paper lay level around in this area when I glue it on. And I'm using cardstock here for to cover this part up. Just like that. Going to be using wood glue here. I'm going to wood glue the spindle to the base and I'm going to set that aside and let it set up. Well, after I sand it a little bit. I love to sand all my pieces. I forgot to sand them. I can't believe I did that. Sanding everything, make it rustic even on the little spindle and I'll sand all my heart pieces and domino pieces and all that kind of stuff. Now I'm just kind of scoring my edges here that's going to wrap underneath the mailbox so that it, you know it just has that nice tight crisp line so that it adheres really nice. Of course getting all my glue on. You can see I had it kind of glued on before and tore it off inside. I better kind of score that area where it kind of folds around there because it'll glue better. And then I'm doing the same thing on this little part here. And of course you could skip all this if you want. If you really like how the mailbox looks and you just want to decorate a base and glue it to a base, it would be super cute. You don't even have to do all this stuff that I'm doing, but you know I like to make it look a little rustic and farmhouse. So here we go, just kind of gluing around that outer perimeter of the lid. Again, scored it. Here's my piece of paper here for the bottom. Now what I want to do here, I'm kind of see bending my lid backwards so I know where to fold it. And then I'm going to come in here and take my ruler, score it really well. But I'm going to kind of not just do a single fold. I'm going to kind of go down about a sixteenth of an inch and make like an extra little fold. I'll show you here close up. Here it comes. See how it's kind of a nice wide fold? And I'll show you from the side what it looks like right there. So you've got a nice kind of longer folded score line there. So that way when your lid folds back and forth, if you didn't do that, then your paper would like really wrinkle really bad there because it wouldn't fold right. You need that extra little space for that lid to kind of fold back and forth onto it. Getting this all glued down, scoring in the edges, and now it opens and closes really well. I'll glue my front and back pieces on here. Just like that, looking super cute. This is what we've got so far. Now I decided here's where I'm only going to use two dominoes, so I cut enough of that uh, black card stock, just like I used on the bottom home decor piece, to cover the front and back of my domino pieces. And actually, I cover the back fully, and in the front, I had traced that domino onto the cardstock, and then I drew a new perimeter, cut that out so that about an eighth of an inch of the domino would show around the edges so you can see the little bit of sanding on here to make it a little more rustic. Three wood heart stickers here is what I'm going to be using. Three wood hearts. Because I want to make my little, you know, flip mail sign thing. Whatever you call that. Mail's in. <laughs> what I want to do is make my popsicle stick sit level on my, and this is actually a coffee stirrer stick, sit level on my heart. So I drew around it at the bottom point of the heart here, and I'm just taking some scissors and I'm going to cut that out. I did this before in uh, my last video. I think it was my last one or the one before that. And I'm just taking some pliers and kind of, you know, taking that little piece out. And we've got this nice little open area here that are, and you can use a popsicle stick of course, it can be wider. And then I'm going to glue this wood heart to one of the other wood hearts. Then I'm going to glue in my little coffee stir stick. And then I'm going to glue the other full wood heart on top of that. So it's going to sandwich that stick right in the center. And then I'm going to glue my little decorative pieces of paper right on top. Just like that. And now I've got a cute little sandwiched male tag sign thingy. <laughs> I'm going to use some little mini clothespins from Dollar Tree, some black and white twine, and I've cut out all these cute little banner pieces and little ephemera pieces. So you know how I always talk about when I use paper. This is one of my very favorite collections, Romance Novel by Prima Marketing. You can get this at Hobby Lobby. It comes in the 6x6 six six size. See these papers? You can cut out all the little tags. This paper line is very old. It's probably well over five years old. It can only be found in the 6x6 six six now. Here's a little look at it. 
gorgeous kind of romantic paper. You can cut all these little tags out, see all this. This is what I talk about when I say I cut little tags out of my papers and stuff. So look for these in six by six or eight by eight or the 12 by 12 in Hobby Lobby, and you can cut out all these little cute ephemera pieces. So I'm taking my twine here. I've knotted one end already, and I'm just kind of measuring it to you know, go the span of one side of my mailbox. I'm not really giving measurements here because I know there's a couple sizes of mailboxes at Dollar Tree. So, you know, you just kind of got to figure out how big I got the larger size. So, you know, you want to cut all your papers and your twines and that to kind of fit whatever size of mailbox that you get. So I'm doing three kind of knots on each end to make the knot just a little bit more substantial and bigger looking just for decorative purposes. And I've got it. Here's another little cute ephemera piece. I cut out some paper. I'm just going to back it up onto some of that black cardstock so it, you know, sticks out a little bit. Doesn't just fall into the pink paper below. It just kind of gives it that little bit of dimension. I'll go ahead and glue that on right down here at the bottom. Perfect. And then I cut three triangle pieces here out of some paper. Just three. Going to kind of glue them a little bit over the top of that little bottom sentiment there. Just gonna overlap them a little bit. Just got three papers I thought were really cute. And cut them out, just long triangle shapes. We're gonna make a little banner, nice and easy. Of course, I sewed around all the edges of my pieces. Yes, all these tiny little pieces. Just like that. Use these two tiny little paper clips from Dollar Tree. I am hooking them on. I just show one here onto little ephemera pieces I cut out. Put those aside. We're going to go ahead and glue our string on one knot at each end. I went kind of end to end on the mailbox there. Then I'm clipping that little tiny ephemera piece onto that twine and I'm going to glue the other twine onto one of the banners. And then here comes my other one. It says with all my heart, little ephemera piece, same thing. Glued the clothespin onto it, clipped it onto the twine and then glued the other twine onto that other banner. And I thought that my pieces here, these just two middle pieces, were they were laying funny. So I'm taking a couple of pieces of cardboard here. I started with one and it wasn't quite high enough, wasn't laying level enough. So I'm adding one more piece. I cut it just to fit under those two ephemera pieces, just to make it a little more dimensional, make it stand up a little bit because that clothespin kind of made it sit wonky when you glued it on. And then I've got two more tiny little banner pieces on either end over here. Just going to glue those on. Perfect. That makes this side looking so cute. Easy, easy. Now I'm going to work on the other side. Again, here's a little ephemera piece. I glued it on the black cardstock. And I have this cute little ephemera postcard. I cut out a paper and I glued that right on to the front of that, right in the address section. And then here's some of those ephemera pieces I cut out of that paper pad for you. I just cut a few and I'm layering them up here and then putting my postcard right over the top with my address to be my Valentine. Nice and easy. Then we're going to move to the front. I've got this little ephemera piece here. This actually came out of a little tag set in the scrapbooking section. Had it in my stash forever, glued it to some black cardstock. This is a little ephemera piece out of that paper pad I showed you. Glued that to some black cardstock, and then I'm gonna just layer both right on front. Off camera, I glued some little hearts onto the front of that larger quote. So for our little mail tag thing here, I got some stickers here, glued them to some really thin cardboard, like cereal cardboard, and then I was able to sew through that on my sewing machine because the cardboard's so thin and sewed the stickers onto it, give it a little dimension. Taking the open end of my scissor blades and scraping along the edges. And when I sew and stuff, you can see here, I let the little threads and everything hang off because I just think it adds more texture, kind of gives it that country, rustic farmhouse look. How many more words can we use to describe it? I'll go ahead and glue these two little pieces on here. Super, super cute. Go where your heart takes you. And then I cut my little uh, stirrer stick a little bit shorter, so now I'm sanding it. I wish I actually left it a tiny bit longer, but leaving the little flag up, gluing it on. So I'm gonna skip ahead for a minute. I have one of these chalkboard uh, things from Dollar Tree, and I filled the hole with this wood filler. 
and I'm going to paint it front and back with the Dixie Belle chalk paint in black or caviar. I realized that I need something stable to go under the mailbox. So, you know, if you're using the plunger or a piece of spindle or something like that, you can't just sit the mailbox directly on top of that. It'll wobble, and I'll kind of show you that in a minute. Going to get it all dry and sanded so it matches everything on the base. So here it is. If I put the mailbox on top, it'll just do this. There is not enough surface underneath. So I'm adding a little wood glue and adding this kind of, I chose a nice kind of rectangular piece on here so that when we glue the mailbox on top, it's got nice surface area. We're gonna set that aside and let it dry. Now I'm gonna work with the bottom of our little mail sign flippy thingy. <laughs> Still haven't know what it's called. Somebody tell me what it's called. These are tiny little brads you can get in the scrapbook section. And they actually look like the big fasteners you can get, you know, at Walmart or something like that. They're just tiny. And I'm cutting off the little prongs. And then I'm gluing the leftover top piece using some pliers because it's tiny right on top. Just to make it look like a little, you know, bolt glued into that. That it can flip back and forth. If you don't have that, just, you know, cut a cute little circle piece of paper. Just something there to make it look like it's attached. These are the trims I'm using. This uh, one here, burlap, is from Walmart. The other one is from Hobby Lobby. I got it half off. And basically, I just pleated it back and forth. So I've got two loops on each side. And then I'm cutting some tails here. I'm doing this all kind of separately. And then I'll distress the edges here. So that's what I did to all the ribbon, distressed it so I can, you know, make it look all kind of rustic. Just lay that across the back like that. And then I'm going to cut a piece for the center. I'm going to cut this in half lengthwise. Just pull on the threads to distress the edges. And of course, I'll have to trim the length here a little bit as well. And then what I'm going to do is just take this and wrap it around the whole set I just showed you. Kind of had to flip that one piece forward a little bit. Just wrap it around. I'm kind of pinching the middle, pinching it so it pleats in the center. And then I'll wrap that one piece around the center to keep it all together. Just like this. Got to keep it pinched. It was kind of hard to keep it pinched and wrap at the same time. I needed one more hand. Wrap it and then I'll glue it here. Of course, one side. And I'll do the same thing to the other little ribbon, but I don't pleat it because it's tiny. Wrap it around nice and tight so it stays pleated in the center. Cut that off and then you know, to the length I need and then glue that part on. And I don't mind that my little tails are kind of out to the side a little bit because it'll help us later. So here again, doing the same thing on uh, the littler twine or the littler ribbon. I'm doing three loops this time though. Lay the piece across the back, the tails. Cut a smaller piece. We'll glue that right in the center. Wrap it around and into the back. Trim it to size and then glue it to the back. Just like that. Perfect. That's going to look so cute. We're going to set that aside for now. So cute. All right, let's work the bottom. So I've got decided to add another kind of wood heart in our little rose ensemble when we get to the bottom, when we use the roses so that kind of matches the hearts and stuff on top. So I'm just covering both sides. Sweet Love, I painted those, and I don't think I mentioned earlier, it was just Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color drop cloth, and I'm gluing these two words to those little domino signs. And that's why on that very first ribbon, that kind of cream burlap ribbon, I don't care if the tails hang straight down, they hang kind of out to the side, because then we'll be able to see these two little signs down below the ribbon, and you'll see what I'm talking about in just a minute. Just kind of gluing these here. And you can use up there, you know, Dollar Tree has those cute uh, chipboard is what we call it, or cardboard words and stuff now that you can get, and those would look perfect here. I have spray glitter. I get this at Walmart. I'm going to spray the whole thing off camera just to make it, not too much, just to make it a little glittery, and I decided I needed to use one of these tumbling tower block pieces, so I paint it in the black, and now I'm distressing it because I need a place to glue my ribbon. So I'm going to glue it right up under that little piece that we'll glue our mailbox to. Just gluing it right up underneath, right against it, because I need to bring that ribbon just a little more forward. So it looks just like this. Perfect. We'll go ahead and glue the first ribbon 
right onto that block. I do add a little bit up on top off camera too, so it glues right to that platform at the top. And then it glue our next ribbon on top of that. And I kind of glued the tails down on this one in a downward motion a little bit. I pleated them downward and glued the tails on. Now I'm gonna put my little hearts and flowers down here. Just a tiny bit. Glued the heart down first. I kind of glue in the front and off to the left side. It's just kind of how I do it when I kind of make these cute little sign things. Add a little red heart here. So trying to bring down the pink and the red that I use kind of on top as well. Sorry, my head kind of gets in the way here and there. Adding the smaller red rose. Really, really wished I could get those mini roses. Ours. Dollar Tree does not have them. I couldn't even order them. Dollar Tree said it's not available in your area and they would delete them out of my cart. Those new mini roses. Drive me nuts, but oh well. So got everything glued down in the bottom. I'm gonna glue my little signs down here. So it says sweet love. I'm gonna kind of glue them onto each other a little bit. So I've got a little more gluing surface and they don't fall off. And yes, I'm just using the Fabri-Tac. It works perfectly wonderful. This will stay glued for years. Once I've got this into place, I found these prayer cards at Dollar Tree. They're for Easter, but I love them. If uh, I think they're so neat. I chose quotes that talk about loving one another. Bible quotes. The colors are different, but you know, you could even like take these and retype them and print them off and print them off your computer on the paper that matches. And they fit perfectly inside the mailbox if you wanted to do this option. Still haven't decided that yet, but and it closes fine. But anyway, I just wanted to show you that fun creative option that you could tuck those inside the mailbox. I thought they worked perfectly. So the last thing we need to do is glue our bottom signpost onto our mailbox. And then that makes this project complete. So I really hope you enjoyed this project today. I love how it came out. I think it's so precious. I love all the texture on it. I love how we kind of took the Dollar Tree mailbox and we just flipped it around and made it totally different using a little bit of kind of paper crafting supplies as well mixed in with the Dollar Tree kind of gives it that rustic farmhouse texture. I think this is what I'm gonna keep for myself love 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 how it turned out leave me a comment down below and let me know if you love it just as much as i do and if you're going to make one for yourself please give this video a thumbs up it really helps my channel to grow remember if you're not a subscriber go ahead and hit that red subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on a single video from me i thank you for sharing your time with me and i'll talk with you again soon bye